You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until tonight Hey, good afternoon. How are you? How the heck are you? Uh, let me do a quick chat thing and say, uh, testing mic one, two, three. Maybe if somebody could just let me know on the chat that audio is happening so that I don't do what I did that one time, which is talk in the voice of the devil because it was running through like a soundboard thing. Uh, so I guess two things. One, is sound coming through? Two, is it not uh, the devil voice. And hey, Jeff. All right. You can hear me. I'm just going to presume that that uh, I just sound like a regular dude and, and not uh, Beelzebub. So uh, welcome to this, this uh, you know, li live stream cast thing. I don't know what the kids say, but it's live video. And, and we're going to talk about security stuff, uh, specifically using wa Waza, which it's really tempting not to go was a like the obnoxious commercial so i'm going to try not to do that i think it's just pronounced was a and um talk about using that for a sim you could use for both home and uh you know work purposes um i uh th th just so you know i'm gonna paste a little linkaroo um let's see here okay sound is coming through it's not the devil no monster voice today and i do have a certain devilish okay <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, I just want to share a couple links with you as I as I do this. So this episode is inspired by this YouTube video by a YouTube channel called Network Chuck, which is really awesome. I've, I've come across it several times. Um, I came to know about Network Chuck when I had um, Crash Plan as my main backup system. And I had a NAS that wasn't officially supported by Crash Plan, you know, but it was a, a huge set of hard drives, right, to back up all my videos and home stuff to. Um, and on Network Chuck's channel, I learned about how to use this dockerized crash plan custom container to, you know, unlimited backup stuff to crash plan data centers for whatever it was, 10 bucks a month. So someone sent me the video that I just sent you, um, and he gave like a super fast, like really <laughs> high energy, entertaining, like, Boom! Here's how you get Waza running up, uh, you know, at home to to monitor your home or work endpoints. Um, so I played with it the last couple of days and um, really, really like what I see so far. So this this very well may become a multi part series, um, especially because I think I'm in my my Waza diapers. Um, but um, I have found a few things that I think were kind of missing or not highlighted earlier enough, early enough in the Network Chuck video that I kind of want to raise your attention to as well. So this is gonna be kind of a primer on how to get this installed. And it literally is one command. I'm not trying to like uh, be clickbait here, but uh, you really can get it going that fast. Um, and then the agent install, everything is, is pretty smooth. So the way I'm gonna approach this or try to today is uh, I'm gonna get the, the, the Waza install going. I'm gonna show you like the quick start guide and quite literally the one command you need to just run and let bake. And then while that happens, we'll come back and we'll highlight a couple, you know, shameless promos and uh, that kind of stuff. By that time, Waza should be installed. Um, in my test runs, it took about four and a half minutes. So I think that's pretty good for like a fully baked sim to get up and running in one command and, and five minutes. That's great. Uh, by the way, this is not sponsored by them or anything. Although certainly if anybody associated their uh, sees this and, you know, wants to set up podcast, you know, sponsorship agreement, something like that, let me know. I'm certainly not opposed to that. Um, and then we'll probably end with installing, um, I guess my commercial break will be uh, elsewhere, but we'll install some agents. We'll do a, um, and it's not Mac and Linux, it's a Windows and Linux. But anyway, we'll install some agents. And then while those bake, those will take a while to like run, do a vulnerability assessment on themselves, report all that data to, to Waza, then we'll take our quick commercial break. Then we'll come back and look at, even initially, some really interesting bits of information that those agents report in with that I think could be you know, super helpful for a, a business or a home lab 
or home. I think in the network check video, he actually installs this on some of his family's endpoints. And uh, yeah, the, re the results are are interesting. Um, that's another reason I wanted to get into some of this blue team stuff is like, I think this, I hope this makes uh, pen testers and red teamers more valuable to clients, you know, when you can kind of speak to the blue team side of things. Because um, we've got a lot of SMB clients that can't, um, can't afford a managed 24 seven service and God bless them. They have to install and run and manage uh, a SIM in-house. So I, th I think at least initially, this looks like it certainly could fit, fit the bill. All right. Um, let me just check the, the comments here. Uh, every time he says, was a like, was up, take a shot. Yeah, I can't, I'm sorry about that. It's too, I grew up in that era where those obnoxious commercials really permanently stained my brain and I can't, just say it in plain, quiet, like, waza. I, it's hard. It makes me want to throw up. I have to do the full, blah, blah. So apologies in advance for that. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and Jeff, it looks like, Jeff and Greg, looks like we're getting, we're getting some good ideas for, for what this episode should be called, uh, such as, um, that's how I should title it. I installed waza. And then this happened. Or, um, here we go. Jeff has another good idea. I'll pop up. One weird trick to bake was it will surprise you. Yeah, it does need to be more um, buzzfeedy and clink, clink or click baity. I went with just a straightforward using it as a sim for work and home. Boring, but anyway, uh, let's get to it. So let me go over to my lab here. Let's see, did that screen switch? Okay, I think it did. Although the text is a little small, so I'm in my I'm in my Windows lab here. Let me blow up the text and make things. A little bit more magnified, uh, and I am I am showing stuff directly off of the Waza Quick Start Guide. So let's just pipe in links to you as we use them. So you will want to definitely take a peek at the beginning of the article to understand what are going to be your CPU and RAM and storage requirements. Um, I think I went I think I went this route for my uh, droplet here. So decent amount of RAM, quad CPU, and and plenty of storage. Although I I I think we'll just see kind of how this goes and what the interest level is. But I I definitely don't have time to like get all my um, home and like nucs that are out across the world talking to this. But I certainly like the idea that they that they would be. So. Um, We'll see if this is just a temporary, you know, throw it up there and then burn and rebuild. But anyway, I threw I threw a ton of resources at this thing. Um, and then as far as operating system, you've got a couple options here. I today am using uh, the latest uh, 2204 Ubuntu. And uh, OK, here's the web browsers, blah, blah, blah. All right. So let's get to the goods. Oh, that still might look kind of small on your screen. Let me let me inflate it to like old guy size here. All right. Uh, here it is. If, if you're like me and you got your, oh, good Lord, where is it? There we go. Here, here's my droplet in the cloud with, uh, like I said, nothing but uh, Ubuntu. I, and I did do the apt-get update, apt-get upgrade thing. But that's it. Uh, and now all I'm going to do is uh, run this script. Just going to uh, curl or pull down uh, this install uh, sh and then run it as as sudo now as a general practice does this make me as a security practitioner want to vomit into my empty coffee cup over here sure it does you don't want to just run any old thing like this kids where you just run a unknown shell script as as sudo but uh for this particular package i'm i'm okay with uh the risks so let me just plop that right into the instance here Pagoingos. And of course, you want to know the password, which I definitely know off the top of my head. Um, please, please pardon me for one moment. I'm a little bit terrified on a on a live stream to to bring up my password manager. I don't know if you've ever had that in any sort of Zoom meeting or something, but where you you open up an app and then it pops up full screen on the screen you're sharing, even though you're like, please go to monitor two, please go to monitor two. It still is just like, Haha, forget it. I'm popping up on monitor one, baby. Okay, here we go. I think we've got it. We'll do. Huh, uh, 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 huh. Okay, take two. 
Okay, there we go. And that is it. No additional interaction from me required. Uh, I just want to make sure that maybe I see a little bit more than this. There we go. It's installing all the dependencies, all the extra modules that come along with Waza. So uh, now I will flip back to, let's see, let's just escape out of this for a second and go back to this guy for a second. And uh, let me just move into, uh, as that's cooking in the background, let me uh, just hit a few bits of news and shameless promos, OK? Um, I'll try to make those quick. Uh, I, I should really stop plugging this. You're on it. You already know that this happens. But every Thursday at 1 PM Central, we'd look at something security flavored. So today, uh, it's this. Last week, it was Tales of Pentest Ponage, which I'm not trying to do BuzzFeed hype alert, but that one that one was really cool. The, it was all about uh, owning vCenter with the CVE that makes it vulnerable to Log4J Shell Center. Um, and boy, was that exciting to do on a pen test. I mean, I've read about it forever, but it was my first time doing it live. Um, we'll do it live! And, and it worked out pretty good. So if you like this kind of stuff, then please join us for any uh, Thursday broadcasts. And then uh, sevenminsec.com slash live has the whole backlog of everything we've done in the past. So you can check it out on YouTube if you miss it. Um, we've got an ebook. If you want to check that out, it's $7.77 and you can get it at ebook.sevenminsec.com. And uh, also we have a companion GitHub repo where uh, people send in like, ooh, typo here, buddy. I'd really like to see that, pal. Um, you can pop those in as uh, tickets or issues, and then we'll uh, look at, you know, baking those into version uh, whatever is next. 1.2, I guess, would come up next. By the way, you buy the book once, you get all the upgrades forever for free. So there's never a bad time to check that out. Um, and then we just finished a couple weeks ago uh, a, a run of our light pen test light class, uh, which some of you on the chat I have uh, either beta tested for us and or taken live. And I really appreciate that, by the way. Um, next one coming up is in September. So it's basically three half days where we start with a student machine. I just get you access to RDP right into it. And together, we jump on Zoom. Um, and, and I walk you through like privilege escalating on your own machine and then beating the, the bejesus out of the the domain to a point where you get domain admin in several different ways and we abuse our our privileges and some some fun methods so welcome to check that out and uh with that i don't know if that was four or five minutes but let's just flip back and take a take a peek at our um take a peek at our install to see how it's going okay it's oh hold on a second i did the thing do you ever do this thing where like you've got something running but because you've highlighted it, you no longer see text at the bottom. I can't tell you how many times I did that during like a, a crack map exec operation that was going to run on many machines. And I'm like, oh, it's hung up on this one. But really, it's just that you've highlighted something. So you've kind of traffic jammed the log output. So usually I just go in here and I hit space bar. OK, so we're further along. Um, I'll tell you what, this uh, since this just has a couple uh, minutes, um, let me show you. Um, uh, or, or play for you if it's going to work. Uh, my buddy Ken, or Conundrum, you've seen him on the program uh, a few times, uh, and his company is hosting a really cool um, uh, security conference coming up in September. And I just, I haven't even seen this yet. I just got the little promo video for it. It's just about one minute. Um, he sent it to me. It's ready to play. Oh, and our, our install finished. But let me let me show you this because I'd really like to promote this for uh, for for my friends over at uh, Red Sea or Security where Ken works. So check out this one minute security um, conference promo. And uh, next week I'll have uh, I think five tickets or so to give away to you, uh, our security friends. So check this out, and then we'll get back to what's that. Hack Redcon is a cybersecurity conference hosted by Red Sea Security. It's going to be located at the Louisville Slugger Museum and the University of Louisville on September 8th and 9th. We're going to have training, including professional workshops and K-12 training. The conference day has three talk tracks. Talks range from red team, blue team, purple team, pen testing, hardware and IoT, malware development, threat intelligence, incident response, forensics, leadership, government and military, and probably the highlight of the conference, career and workforce development. 
where there's going to be mock interviews, resume reviews, and feedback from hiring managers in the industry. Whether you're brand new to cybersecurity and want to get your foot in the door, or already a professional and looking to expand your skills, we will have something for everyone. Come and join us in Louisville this September. Tickets online now at hackredcon.com. All right. Hack Red Con. Hack Red Con. Uh, dot com. All right. So here we go. I'm going to just crank this up to, yeah, I think that looks decent, hopefully. Uh, but here we go. The, the Waza install is done. And boy, isn't it nice? Those of you who, uh, well, I think you're all, if you're on this, you're security conscious, but as a pen tester, I always appreciate when, a, when a something that you install changes the default creds automatically or, or yeah, yeah, just does it automatically. Because one of the things we do on a pen test, if other surfaces aren't providing much interesting stuff, like Active Directory is pretty buttoned up, things are well patched, right? Um, one thing we'll do is we'll scan out and we'll take screenshots of all the web interfaces for the endpoints in scope and then look at those, maybe log into those. Here, here's a good example, and I've talked about this on the show before, but we find a multifunction printer device with default creds of admin, admin, or admin, no password, or no user password as the password. Uh, we get in there and the organization will have an Active Directory account uh, saved in there that's set to an S, it's set to point at an SMB share so that Bob from accounting can walk up, scan a document and have it automatically saved over SMB to his, you know, to like the shared print folder or something. Um, so one of the things we can do as pen testers is go into those devices, log in with default creds, change the SMB share to point at our attacking box, then run something like Responder or, or something similar. And then often in those multifunction printer devices, you can you can set up your target and say, test the cred. And then that will do an SMB connection to us where we can capture and or pass that user hash. And sometimes those those um, in those multifunction print devices, they're service accounts and, and they're, they're high privilege accounts. And maybe they're not domain admin, but they might have local admin to a bunch of other boxes. And that's a way to get a pretty, you know, quick, uh, free, free credential. But anyway, tangent, but related. Uh, so here we go. I've got username, admin, password of brrr, love it. Love the complexity of that. So let me go uh, here to monitor.7minsec.com, which you're welcome to see if you can hit. Hopefully you can't. Um, I just set it up and I'm pretty sure I've... <laughs> Maybe one of you will give me a free pen test right now on this endpoint. Um, but there we go. The waza is checking all the things and all the stuff. And boom, we are in. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you uh, for all the great... I, see, I love back and forth. When smart people share smart people stuff, and then selfishly, I get to reap the rewards. I love that. So thank you for the terminal tips. And uh, Jeff, <laughs> looks like our looks like our buddy Jeff is already giving me a free pen test and was ready to use those creds. So I'm going to rotate the cred after this and double check the firewall. But the point of this being, um, let me blow this up a little bit. Uh, right away here, we are ready to add agents. Now, here's where, when I was following the network uh, Chuck video, there's a setting I want to make, ch I want to change on the server now before I add a single agent. And that is, um, it, it is the setting that turns on vulnerability assessments for the agents that check in. Okay, so uh, it is under, da, 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 um, so main menu, management, configuration, boom. And then edit configuration here in the upper right. I might pull this up just a tiny bit more. I guess I'm on my small screen over here, so it looks like kind of squinty binty font. But uh, if, if it needs further blowing up, uh, let me know. But here's the big config file that honestly I got to spend some more time digesting. But I looked up this setting, uh, and, and you can just do a find here for Vuln. That will take you to this section called Vulnerability Detector. And as you can see here, uh, enabled by default is, is no. 
Um, and I'm, I'm sure that makes sense probably from like a agent horsepower standpoint, I'm speculating, I have no idea, but a lot of enterprises that we do work with, I know that it's almost comical when they're, when their users boot up their workstations and log in, they're like, yeah, we pretty much go to breakfast because the SIM agent has to load the EDR, the, this, the, that, this service, that service, this cloud connector, this, and, and their task bar just goes like bit, bit. And then shrinks at the end, and and so you know the last thing the world needs is another agent running on our systems, right? So maybe this is an attempt to just like by default have this agent fire up, do like a low process collection, and start feeding events to uh, Waza. But anyway, I want this on just so I can show you some of the cool info we get right off the bat. So I'm gonna say yeah, and that's it. I'm gonna leave everything else the same, um, and then this one here essentially says when the service starts, so this will be upon every reboot, um, do the vulnerability assessment, report into the dashboard. So good, we'll save it up. And then uh, I should see, yeah, here we go. The changes won't actually take effect until I do a restart, not of the box, but of the manager. So that's up here, big blue button, blammo. Manager will be restarted, are we sure? We are. Okay, so we're going to give that just a couple seconds. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, by the way, while this is going, uh, here's another thing that I looked up on the quick start guide that helped me. Uh, because <laughs> first time I did this in the lab, um, I, oh, yeah, I did something and I typed like clear screen or I closed this window and I was like, oh, oh, poo poo face. Where'd my password go? Uh, there's a little command here. Uh, let me see if this copy paste works well. I'm not really good with computers as far as copy and paste goes. There it is. Uh, this is right after the quick start guide too, I think, as well, where uh, you can get from this tar file that gets generated upon install, uh, you, you can retrieve uh, the passwords that you need, okay, for all the different components. So all hope is not lost if you do what I did and you install it and then close the window <laughs> accidentally. Not that any of you would do that, but I did. So just back off, okay? All right, so we restarted the manager. We should be ready then if I go back to home icon uh, and maybe not that, but maybe if I go, there we go. Uh, we don't have any agents. So let's go ahead and add one. Now, here's another thing that I wish I would have known before I played with this the first time. Um, actually, let's get all set like we're going to do one. So I will have, uh, I'll have this box, this Windows server report in. Uh, I'm going to hit Windows. And you've got your choice of XP, uh, server 08, or 7 and above. Architecture is highlighted automatically. Just type in your monitor address. But I'm going to skip that for a minute because I want to show you that down here, uh, it asks, oh, do you want to put these systems into groups? which makes logical sense, right? You want to be able to put these into uh, groups that, you know, maybe just Linux ones, maybe Windows, whatever. Um, I did not find, and I have not found, a way to just do this in the GUI. I could be missing the obvious, and if I am, then just skip what I'm about to say. But uh, uh, upon consulting the uh, RTFM, uh, here's what I found out, is that, let me just go to that and um, groups get added by calling the agent groups command. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack A, I'm going to add a tack G group called um, whatever, uh, tangent town windows. Whoops, I can spell windows. Um, Tangent Town is the test domain that I'm playing with here. And uh, so I want to make a group of all the Windows boxes for it. So boom, I'll do that. Do I want to create it? Yes, indeedy. And then um, if we have time, I'll also add an agent to a another Linux system that I have out on the Internet. So I'm going to do this. I'll just create a, a group called Linux. Oh, and then I learned if you're like me, pardon me. Ooh, I got the mint cocoa burps in case you weren't wondering. If you're like me and you don't like saying yes to confirmation um, questions, 
you would think, or a, a person might think, it would be tack Y to just go past that whole, do you want to create a thing? But it's tack Q. So notice there, the Linux group was created, but I didn't have to say yes. Q maybe means quiet. I don't know. Look, don't get, don't be mad at me. I didn't I didn't I didn't make this. Okay, I wouldn't know how. Uh, all right, so I got two groups made. Let me refresh the agent creator wizard. Let's start this one more time. Windows system seven plus x sixty four. It's going to connect to monitor that sedmensec.com, which Jeff is actively hacking. So. Let me know when you get RCE on that. Um, agent name. Um, don't, uh, this, this, is, this is pretty important. Um, by default, it sets the endpoint name as whatever the system name is. So for me, that's what I want. I want my agents to be named their uh, system name. So I almost wish that like, this is me wishing I had a genie and being like, hey genie, I'm going to rub the genie bottle. Uh, I wish that like by default, it was just, cleared out and you had to like tick a box that said, no, actually I want to, I want to um, specify the agent name because if you, yeah, if you specify it here, <laughs> it cannot be changed once the agent has been enrolled. Now I'm, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Okay. I'm not, be, I'm not trying to be like complaining Carl here, but in this day and age, can't we just <laughs> rename things? <laughs> I mean, I can do it with, on my Mac with with right click rename, um, but anyway, please. Not, I'm not hating. I'm just like, what? Anyway, um, so I'm going to leave that blank, and it is going to then populate the computer name as the default. All right, and then uh, let's put it in one or more existing groups. Uh, this is going to be my Windows one, so I'm going to select Tangent Town Windows. Um, okay, we are flipping ready to do this thing, and look at this. Oh. Pretty little PowerShell, all set. It's going to pull down the latest agent installer from uh, Waza. It's going to uh, save it locally, and then it's going to install it. It's going to point to our monitor, uh, you know, public-facing internet server, uh, which is the same as the registration server, and it's going to stick it in the uh, Tangent Town Windows group. So yes, copy that baby. Uh, I like running things in PowerShell ISE, so I'm going to do that as admin. And then I'm going to do a new thing, and I'm going to crank it up to Old Man old man River font. Blamo and Kablamo. And that happens very fast. In fact, I'm not 100% sure it worked. So I'm going to check two things. This is this is maybe not out of the manual. This is just out of the Brian Johnson. I don't like to read, so I'm just going to go looking for stuff. Um, I'm going to go look in program files x86, and here's how I know magic is happening behind the scenes. This OSEC agent folder gets installed with some of the goodies that you need um, as part of this agent. So that that's like sanity check one for me because I didn't get any verbose output, and I could probably... This probably has like a tack verbose flag or something. But um, if you just need to check it yourself, look that this folder was created. Then step two would be, nope, not that. Step two would be check out services. And what you want to look for is the waza agent uh, service. It'll be there. It won't start automatically. So there's another troubleshooting tip for you that I... I didn't spend a lot of time wondering why my agents didn't check in, but you might. So um, it doesn't start automatically, but it would have started on a reboot. So I'm going to just go, yeah, dudes and dudettes. Let's kick that into high gear. Let it start um, gathering information about things that are installed, this, that, and the other. While that's happening, let's go over, do the same thing to our friend desktop one, because I want to do a couple things on it. Um, actually, okay, so here's what I'll do. I'm going to get our good friend PowerShell ISE going. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> what's that? Uh, uh, let's try that. Nope. Uh, uh, let's try that. 
Yes. Winning of all the things to go wrong on a live demo. I really don't want forgotten password to be the reason. Um, okay, I'm going to get this queued up, but I'm not going to run it yet because uh, Jeff and some of the rest of you, you have told me about forever, and I finally have been playing with it. Um, oh, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. What I want to do is I want to get um, a bunch of software installed on on this thing because software inventory is part of the information that gets reported to Waza. But I've got like nothing on here. This is just boring old old Windows um, vanilla. And so I want to get some packages slapped on here. And so Jeff and some of the rest of you said, hey, to quickly download third-party apps, give Chocolatey a try. Chocolatey.org, I think, install. So finally, and pardon me, just be nice to me. I'm so new noob at this that it'll hurt your feelings. Um, but but this this is pretty sweet. So I'm going to quickly install a bunch of stuff on here. So basically, it, it, the the use case I see, at least for this this demo, is <clears throat> rather than me go to 7zip.org and Adobe dot blah blah blah, I can just use this package manager and quickly pull down uh, a bunch of things. So I'm going to get chocolatey installed like this and this is definitely something i want to use more on like um our pen test drop boxes that go out to customers um just so that it's it's quicker to install the third party stuff um so you can go i i, I want to do like once i'm better at this i want to do maybe a session just on on, on chocolatey but whoops um you can do i shouldn't have typed that is this going to like list all packages um but you can do like a Chaco search, I think, 7-zip, and then get a list of like all the packages, kind of like the apt cache search, if you've ever done that. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll, we can talk more about that another time, but I'm going to do something like this. Uh, Chaco install 7, whoops, 7-zip, um, uh, maybe, I'm, I'm just guessing, Winder, Stat, uh, what would be something else? File, Zilla, how about that? Just three things. Let's see if that works. Oh, and I should have added probably attack Y because I'm maybe going to have to. Uh, uh, I'm maybe going to have to like approve this. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll just let that go for a sec. To confirm. Oh, is it asking me if I want to do it? I do. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, it's just thinking about doing stuff. Um, if you don't run the script. Oh, this will fail. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's just kill that. Nope, I can't. It's too late. It's too late. I've done the damage now. Uh, uh, okay, well, let, let me just see real quick. Did, did I at least get... All, all I want is to have one app that's not like Windows stuff uh, installed. Okay, well, I do have Chrome. I do have... Actually, I do have a couple things. But but this, I've like completely... I've completely broken. I've broken the world right now. Okay, let me see if I dare do that. No. Let me just try this one more time. Uh, D-I-R. Okay, whoops. How about that? Uh, okay. Okay, I'm going to give this one more try. Probably not a good idea to run two charcoal processes. But, you know. Give it a shot. Okay, how about Chaco install 7-zip uh, and winder der, st stat and filezilla with y? Oops. Bing. Okay. All right. That's looking promising. All right. And all I want that to do is just show up so I have some other some other apps to show on this thing. I do my little refreshy guy here. Ding. Okay. Okay. All right. So I've got at least I've got a couple things, right? Got FileZilla. Great. Okay. Now, now I'll do my install. Although this is, I don't know. This window might be totally broken. I'm gonna try to run it over here. Let's see if that goes. Blink. All right. And again, let's review. What do we do when we're not sure whether or not things are actually happening? We go to 
uh, program files x86. There's our OSAC agent folder. Sweet. And then uh, let's see, in the same admin window, I'm going to call services.misc. And do we have the waza thing? Yes, we do. Sweet. So that'll bake now. And then before we take our quick commercial break, so I can catch up on uh, comments and, and things, um, let's also do... Oh, uh, let's get this. Let's get this sucker going on a Linux box too. So I'm going to come back up here. Let's change to Ubu, and I do have 22 version plus. It's an x64 thing. Don't forget your server address. Um, I have done sometimes. Um, I, I sort of wish at the bottom again. Here I am. Is it? Is it? Uh, is this show called Brian gets three wishes granted? No, it isn't. Uh, but I sort of wish at the bottom, this would not generate until you populated um, a um, Waza server address. Because I pushed this out to a couple test machines yesterday and I forgot to populate this. So as you might imagine, my agents tried to talk to nothing at nothing.com. Don't go to that website. It's probably porn or malware. Monitor.7minsec.com if it's not fully compromised by Jeff at this point. Agent name I'm going to leave alone. Uh, no. Exist, uh, put, going to put it in the old Linux group this time. Okay, so it's going to pull down the deb package. That all looks good. Da, 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 da. Going to point to monitor.7minsec.com. You want to type carefully, of course, right? Um, that looks good. So I'll come over here to my box called uh, Fishy. And let's rock this thing. Oh, son of a fat dog. Of course, I don't remember that password either. So please insert hold music while I... Oh, I'll tell you what. While I type this in to get it going, let me actually take a commercial break. That will help me. Uh, we have a sponsorship today from our uh, fine friends over at Blue Mira, uh, which make an awesome security solution as well. So check that out. And by that time, I'll be back and hopefully have uh, three agents in the oven. Okay, I'll be right back. Today's episode of the 7-Minute Security Podcast is brought to us by our friends over at Bloomira. And boy, do we love Bloomira. Uh, it wasn't too long ago we started a podcast series called Desperately Seeking a Super Sim for SMBs. Because everybody needs to be watching their network and Active Directory and knowing and getting alerting when things go bump in the night. And from that series, someone from Bloomira reached out and said, well, uh, we're an awesome sim, and we love SMBs. Have you ever heard of us? You want to give us a try? Want to give us a spin? And I said, yes, I want to literally give you a spin in my light pen test light training environment, where all we do, we, me and the students, all we do every day, all day, is beat the heck out of a network and punch Active Directory in the face over and over again. And Blue Mirror was like, yeah, fine. Spin up a trial. Let's see how it goes. And oh my gosh, we got all sorts of helpful alerts on things that we actually cared about happening in the environment. Not too many, we weren't getting alert fatigue, we were getting just the right amount of alerts. And maybe the best thing out of that experience was that I got so excited about the alerts, I went to Blue Mirror and I said, oh, you know, it would be cool if you could alert on a couple of other things like AS rep roasting and maybe um, if someone flipped the W Digest flag on an endpoint so that attackers were able to scrape creds in clear text out of memory. I mean, that's something that shouldn't be happening on happening on the average business day. So wouldn't it be sweet if you could detect that? And not too long after uh, that conversation, they had built detections for both those things. And that's the kind of relationship you want with your SIM service provider. You want to be able to go to them with ideas. You want to be able to take results from a pen test and say, hey, our pen testers did these 12 things. You alerted on four of them. Why is that? And if they kind of dismiss you or chuckle or say, oh, let, let us secure explain to you while you're a moron. If they do any of that, you probably want to tuck tail and run. And I would invite you instead to go talk to my friends uh, over at Blue Mira, who are very SMB friendly. Uh, I really like the whole crew over there. You've, you've heard some of their featured interviews on the podcast. And I really can't recommend them enough. So go check out their SIM plus XDR solution today. Visit bluemira.com slash 7ms to get started. All right, and we're back. Uh, so question came up uh, f that I saw from, um, did it, did, where was that? Uh, Jeff had asked the following about uh, 
Uh, where did it go to enable? Um, I, I I turned on the the vulnerability management piece. That was in Waza management, and then uh, configuration, main menu management configuration. Then over here to edit configuration, and then uh, I just searched for the word vuln. Uh, and then we got vulnerability detector, and then I just flipped that to yes. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I mean, there's there's so much in here that I don't at all know how to do yet. Um, but the the vuln management piece is pretty cool. So let's see in the in the remaining time we have, uh, let's see what we've got. Oh, good, happy days. So uh, two agents have reported in. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? Hold on a second, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. Um, our third, uh, our third victim, the, the, the Linux one did not, um, let's see, where do I go to, oh, there we go. Deploy new agent. Let me just look real quick. Um, I, I like that, that was, is kind of polite and, uh, oh, here we go. I did not, I did not do these steps. Let me just do this real quick so that the Linux one starts reporting in. So pseudo system CTL daemon reload and i certainly could just uh you know do that copy pasty but uh as we've already found out i'm not too good at that so i'm gonna i'm gonna give a i'm gonna introduce big opportunities for system for for user error and and wait for it Wait for it. Okay, I think that's happening. So maybe we'll see that guy pop up on the board soon too. But oh, good lord, it's already here. Hello, little Linux guy. Okay, so we don't know much about the Linux guy yet because it's still kind of a never connected state. But um, here we go. Here's our here's our uh, server and our workstation that have checked in, reporting for duty in the Tangent Town Windows group. So certainly you could just click on the the group name and see just those systems. But um, here's the, the few things I wanted to highlight for you in the time remaining. Uh, let's go into the server 2019 system. And uh, uh, this is nice. All, all this compliance stuff, if you've got systems that need to meet different compliance uh, frameworks, you can you know just click on the one you want and then come into, well, let me see, PCI DSS. Let me look at uh, like what's what's the... What's the complaint? What's the problem here? Or what is the event? Um, and you'll get into compliance mode. And uh, actually, let me back up because I think the way I prefer to look at this is, uh, oops, I went too far back. Uh, the way I prefer to look at this is um, taking a peek at our IT01 server. I love this. Here's a scan that is telling us uh, against the CIS benchmarks. That's the framework I tend to really like because I have a simple brain and it just helps me. Their list helps me understand, oh, I should make XYZ configuration change because it fits into one or more uh, CIS controls. So you can just punch right into this scan. And then uh, maybe I'll just filter by, let's see, result. Let me look at all the things that failed. And this will go through and talk about um, let me see, there was one in here that had to do with, uh, let me see, that had to do with laps that I wanted to look at. Uh, can I just search for, uh, can I search for purely laps? Will that help me find it? Yeah. Okay, so for example, uh, this is saying, hey, you really ought to have the laps local admin password solution um, GPO installed. And it kind of tells you uh, rationale for why this is important how to remediate it, like it gets you started on installing LAPS. I will say this is something in the lab where um, I did install LAPS using the new version that came out in April. Um, and this, I think maybe the, the benchmark system itself needs to be updated because even when I did have LAPS fully up and running and deployed to my whole Tangent Town environment, uh, the benchmark here still thought LAPS was not installed. And I'm, I'm just guessing that it, it is because it's looking for like, the older school um, LAPS DLL that comes along with the install. Um, but still, this is cool. This is just showing you what it checks for, um, you know, the, the description, full information behind each, you know, each thing, each compliance check that you've uh, failed. So I think, you know, it, I guess my, 
my take on this is a lot of compliance frameworks are going to ask you about, you know, do you harden your systems to any, you know, standard? Um, and if so, you know, you know, what is that? I think this would be a way to get started in that arena because um, there are different hardening standards and tools that'll, you know, harden systems up. But if you could go through here, I think, and start picking and choosing which things you're going to push out with a GPO, for example, um, then you could, you know, like on one system, if I was the sysadmin here, I could start rolling out some of these changes on IT01 test to make sure all my software and all my communications work as expected, right? And then start, you know, pushing that out as a GPO so that I, if I do need to answer for, do I harden my systems to a, a standard? I can say, you know, yes, I do. I'm following, you know, the CIS, uh, you know, benchmarks. I don't, I don't, I would never tell somebody you need to, you know, you need to shoot for a hundred percent, but this is another thing, you know, to have these scores and to have a specific count of controls. I think this is a cool way to demonstrate, you know, to your boss or to management that like, well, look at this, you know, in January, uh, we were, you know, we had a 40%, right. And we had, I don't know, you know, 67 failed controls. Well, 77, how about that? Um, and now just six months later, look at this, we've hardened our systems, you know, look at, look at our score go up now. Um, even though I don't get personally all bunged up about scores and grades and colors, um, a lot of times management and C-level people do, they want to see, show me a pretty pie chart that shows our security trending in the, the positive direction. Um, and I think, I think, you know, this, this could be a nice thing to explore and, and get into that a little more. Um, okay, so that's kind of the benchmark area. And then, of course, you know, you can see um, here, here's some of the, the events that have transpired on this system that are triggering one or more MITRE, uh, uh, you know, MITRE items. So if I click into defense evasion here, I did look at these a little bit. And definitely for a part two, I want to do more malicious things against this box and kind of see how it matches up with actual actual. Um, you know, pen testy uh, things, but uh, it saw that the wa the Waza agent stopped, and it points to well that could correspond with this technique. Which, if we jump off into it, it'll talk about okay, this technique involves adversaries that might be you know shutting down uh, services, modifying reg keys, that kind of thing. So in this case, it's fine because I stopped and restarted that um, service, right? But um, if you're looking for signs of naughty things uh, happening um, and you don't have anything else to do it, you don't have like a 24-7 security service, um, this might at least shine a light on evil going bump on your network. So, so I totally dig that. Um, and let me just, I know we only have a few minutes left. So let me go back to, uh, let me go back to not all the way. Let me just go to my Tangent Town group. Let me show you desktop 01. That's the one where I, I put in a bunch of, um, uh, I put in a bunch of app, uh, third-party apps. Um, okay. I, I don't, again, I don't really know what I'm doing. Let me go way too far back and just go into agents and go into, uh, Windows 10. Um, okay, so we've got some more mitery things that might be happening. I can check into that, but let me just go up to where was that? Oh, inventory data, blink. And uh, as we can see, here's here's some hardware inventory. Here's the network interfaces that are connected. I like that. And then uh, you can actually see what the network settings are. You've got your little table here of installed Windows updates, uh, and then down here. Here's the packages that are installed. And if I maybe grow that out a bit to 50 rolls, uh, you know, there's Chrome, there's FileZilla. So I haven't done like any searching on this yet, but I don't think it's a stretch to say you could quickly start gathering an inventory, which is like control number two on the CIS controls. If you're following a framework and trying to be more secure and trying to be more mature, kind of step one is like figure out what you have so you know what to secure. Step two, know what the heck is installed on that inventory so you can, you know, patch and manage it. This could get you in that direction, right? For the price of free-ish, you know, just paying for the, you know, the VMs or the hardware or the droplet behind this software. That's pretty awesome. Um, and then last thing I'll uh, point you to, and then we'll see if we have any closing comments, questions, uh, is that vulnerability assessment that I was talking about. Uh, so if I go, oh, right up here, 
So here's security events, um, integrity monitoring. If you want to see that in action more, maybe I'll do that on a part two. But the Network Chuck video, um, they they did an example of that and uh, you know showed files being tampered with. That's pretty sweet. But uh, let's just click into vulnerabilities and uh, none found. So I don't think this has um, completed yet. So I might not be able to show you that. Excuse me. Let me just see if by chance, whoops, I went too far again. Let me just see if by chance the server has had enough time uh, to show us. Oh, yeah. So on the server side, there are some vulnerabilities. Uh, and here they are. So you could come in. Um, I'm sure you could run a search, right, that says, show me any vulns out there that are CVSS, you know, I don't know, nine and higher or something, right? Uh, look at this. Holy shnikes. I've got just a bum load, pardon my French, of uh, 9.8s. And so if I want to read into those, just click one. Look at that. All all the important in, information and, uh, you know, pointing me towards remediation about patches not installed. So uh, this, these, not that, it, not that you care, but in this lab, this, this, these VMs are like patched up to April or something like that. And then patching is just shut off. So, so we're missing a whole bunch of things. So we can clearly see I'm missing, uh, I think these all have to do with critical windows patches, but yeah, all my nine eights have to do with, I am way, way, way behind uh, on this. So, you know, you could quickly build some queries and this is something I'll play with more in the lab here to find, you know, at an enterprise level, um, in fact, maybe, I don't know. Okay. So here's my, here's my, just my criticals. That's pretty awesome. Um, I imagine you could come probably up to modules, maybe, let me see, security events, uh, security configuration that says, okay, vulnerabilities. Oh, that's back to this modules. Let me just go back to, let me just go back to where my main agents are for a second. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to play more, but I imagine you could just go show me everybody's, um, vulnerabilities as a organization whole. Um, last thing I just want to sneak a quick peek at is our little uh, fishy box here. I have not looked. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, there's a there's a Ubuntu benchmark. So we'll see. I got a 42% there. I'm just curious. What kind of things are they wanting me to do in my failed category? Um, oh, oh, geez. All sorts of partition tweaks. Um, I just took the the very vanilla, just next, next, next install of Ubuntu. So looks like if I really wanted to get in here and watch paint dry, no offense, um, I could do some of these things. But that's that's pretty sweet. Let me just see if for vulnerabilities, does this show anything? Okay, nothing and maybe nothing yet because it, it probably hasn't finished its collection. But uh there you go. There's kind of a little bit of a crash course um, show and tell of uh, was a uh, and, um, you know, if you like this train of um, live demo and, and want to um, go into it more, I, I mean, I'm interested. I'm probably going to jump off and do some more playing just on, on my own time. But if you're like, yeah, I could see us maybe using this and, and want to see more, you know, practical searches and. Um, you know, some of these other modules that we really haven't covered, uh, just let me know. Um, I think I've got a little captiony slide here that shows all our, well, you know, if you want to follow us on the social things or not, that's where you'll, that's where you'll find us. Um, although Twitter, um, I don't want to start a fight, but I, I kind of wince when I open my Twitter now, just cause it seems like it's a different place to be than it, than it used to be. Um, and oh no, sorry. Let me show you that one. Yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, there's our uh, contact page. Would love to talk to you about uh, you know this or you know security assessment, pen testing, training. It's all at sevenminsec dot com. All right, let me flip over to chat. See if there's any closing comments. Uh, Jeff, please do let me know if you fully uh, owned that instance. I'm planning on burning it down and securing it further but uh if there's nothing else really appreciate you coming on and uh hanging out with me i'm here every uh i slash we are here every thursday at uh, 1 p.m central for something security flavored oh just to tease uh coming up stuff um i've got two 
Oh my gosh, two tales of pen test ponage that I can't wait to uh, share with you. That'll probably be next week. Um, it is uh, having to do with domain trusts and how domain trusts can have, dad joke here, trust issues. So that's coming up in the near future. Um, all right. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, all of you. And um, yeah, Jeff, and enjoy your enjoy your RCE on the uh, Waza server while it lasts before I uh, right click shut down. And uh, have a great rest of your week, everybody. And we'll we'll uh, see you next time. All right, bye. You've been watching or listening to Seven Minute Security, a weekly podcast focused on pen testing, blue teaming and building a career in security. For more episodes like this, visit 7ms.us. And for information about our consulting services, visit 7minsec.com.